Hey YouTube, I'm back. Um, I was censored and so that's why you haven't seen me um, for the last, I think now, week and a half. Uh, what happened was I received a strike on my channel. This was not this past Thursday, but the Thursday prior. I got a notification from YouTube. They said that they had removed my interview with Robert F. Kennedy Jr. from back in February, that it violated their COVID-19 medical misinformation policy. And they removed the video and gave me a strike and told me I would not be able to upload for seven days. We believed I would be able to upload then last Thursday, but apparently, I guess, YouTube's got some extra secret special probation for people like me, for bad people like me. And instead, it was longer than seven days. Apparently, we're guessing that maybe it was seven business days. And so they didn't count the weekends or something. So here I am now. Finally able to upload. So I just wanted to let you know why you haven't seen me for the last week and a half. What has happened? Um, you know, I do a show every day on Rumble, and that is where I am not censored. So if you've been missing me, you can go there onto Rumble. And every day I do a show for one hour, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. And that is where you could catch that show. We take a clip from that show and publish it here on YouTube. So that's why you're getting some of the show here. But with the way censorship is going with YouTube, you know, I have to be more selective on which content I can place on this platform. So it's not going to be, it's not going to be always the best stuff. I think, I think a lot of the real good stuff are the content, the topics that we, that we're not able to get into on YouTube. So check out my rumble show. Um, you can just search for me there on rumble, Kim Iverson, and my channel will pop up and you can get that show Monday through Friday, 6 PM Pacific, 9 PM Eastern. But otherwise I'm here, I'm back. <laughs> So here is a clip from tonight's show. Thank you so much for being here. And if you want to support me, you can by joining my locals community. That is what helps protect me from demonetization here on YouTube. And um, so you could certainly do that by joining my locals. And that link is down below. Thank you. Otherwise, here's that clip. And I'll see you guys again tomorrow. Fingers crossed. Let's talk about the blogger. Uh, he's an American Chilean dual citizen lives in Ukraine. He married a Ukrainian woman. They lived in Ukraine. Uh, he was arrested just the other day by the SBU in Ukraine. I believe we have video of him being arrested. Do we have that video? Yeah, this is them. They, so actually the SBU put this video out and they put uh, it to kind of techno music. So we're not really playing it for you because it's just a bunch of techno music, but that's Gonzalo Lira there. He, uh, the very beginning of this video also, we didn't have the whole video, but I, I've seen it, clips of it where, you know, the, the SBU really took time to make this video and they actually film the officers going into the building. They then give fist bumps to the front desk worker who's maybe the, you know, the, the security person or whoever's like managing the building. And then they work their way up to Gonzalo Lira's spot, knock on the door and they arrest him. Um, so they have come out with the reasons for his arrest. And let's see here. The, they're, this is translated from Ukrainian. But they say in the arrest, here's the, the document. And they say the SBU detained a foreign blogger in Kharkiv who denied the crimes of the of the Russians and insulted Ukrainian defenders. The security service gathered evidence against a foreign blogger who publicly justified the armed aggression of the Russian Federation and spread fakes about the war in Ukraine. The person involved has the citizenship of one of the countries of Latin America, but has been living in Kharkiv for several years. He's also an American. After the start of the full scale invasion, the blogger was one of the first to support the Russian invaders and heroize their war crimes. He also engaged in discrediting the highest military political leadership and the defense forces of our state. It is documented that the last uh, that last spring he personally filmed provocative videos in which he tried to capture the faces of Ukrainian defenders and insulted them. He published his streams on two of his own channels on YouTube and Telegram with a total audience of almost 300,000 subscribers. In addition, in his comments, he denied the facts of Russian missile attacks on Ukrainian cities and mass murders of civilians by rioters. During searches of the suspect's residence, mobile phones and a computer with evidence of illegal activity were found. Examinations initiated by the SBU confirmed the facts of criminal acts, a foreign blogger. 
So far, the investigators of the social Sec of the security service have informed him of the suspicion under Art 2 and Art 436-2 of the Criminal Code of the Ukraine Production and Distribution of Materials Containing Justification Armed Aggression of the Russian Federation Against Ukraine, uh, committed repeatedly. The court chose the preventative measure of custody. An investigation is ongoing to establish all the circumstances of the crime. Complex measures were carried out by the SBU employees in Kharkiv region under the procedural guidance of the regional prosecutor's office. So in a nutshell, what they're saying is he's guilty of the crime of justifying Russia's invasion, of being pro-Russian, essentially, and uh, giving maybe a historical background to the reason why Russia would invade Ukraine, discussing NATO uh, expansion, you know, discussing maybe the Nazis, the Azov Battalion inside of Ukraine, the ongoing civil war in Donbass against Ukraine, um, between Ukraine and Donbass. And because he was reporting on these things and giving that opinion, that is actually a crime in Ukraine. You're not allowed in Ukraine to be pro-Russia. You're not allowed to justify the war. So Gonzalo Lira is facing many years in jail. Um, I believe that it's five to seven years he's potentially facing in jail if he's found guilty, which um, given the evidence, I mean, he is a blogger. So there are videos of him discussing exactly what Ukraine says is a crime in their country. So they did make these crimes at the beginning of the war. They made these laws at the beginning of the war, turning pro-Russian um, viewpoints and sentiments uh, or, you know, be anything that's perceived as justifying the war, they did turn that into laws at the beginning of this invasion. Now, I also, in fairness, want to talk about the fact that Russia has similar laws. Also, at the same time that Ukraine made these laws, Russia made very similar laws. So they actually made it um, illegal to uh, spread fakes. They actually, they actually created two laws in Russia. One of them was you're not allowed to spread fake information. So you can't make anything up. You can't claim something that's not true. That is illegal in Russia. And you're not allowed to criticize the war or they didn't label it that way. They, called, they said you're not allowed to criticize any of the military activities in foreign areas, basically saying you're not allowed to criticize the war. And um, even recently, there was a gentleman who was sentenced to seven years for spreading fakes. So the Russians rounded, an, uh, rounded him up and they actually uh, sentenced him to seven years in jail for spreading fakes. The fakes that he spread, according to the court documents, is he said that the war in Ukraine was a war. Um, and that is in Russia is considered fake, fake news. They call it a special military operation, not war. So if you call it a war, then you are now subject to, um, to criminal prosecution. And this gentleman was actually sentenced to seven years. Now his defense, when he went to trial, I read up on the case, his defense was, he says, I thought that law pertained to news, news organizations publicly proclaiming in any sort of news organization or any sort of platform publicly proclaiming that the special military operation was a war, that would be the crime. I'm a private citizen. I should be allowed to say whatever I think. And the Russian government did not agree with him and they actually threw him in jail. He's been sentenced to seven years in jail. So this happens a lot in wartime in various regions of the world. Even here in the United States, there's maybe, you know, sometimes they'd want to put limits on what can and cannot, you know, we see that now here in the United States, there's all these disinformation organizations that they keep, you know, they keep uh, cropping up this ministry of misinformation. But a lot of times in war, we do see countries that will clamp down on information narratives, what they think is spreading disinformation, sowing discord, they will, uh, they will ultimately try to get you. And in this country, they'll try to use a workaround, they'll say it's from under the Espionage Act, at worst, it's treason. Um, and they and and when you look at the history of the Espionage Act, even here in the United States, when you look at who has been prosecuted under the Espionage Act, about 50 percent of those cases, they're journalists of some sort, radio, newspaper, uh, media of some kind. It's publishers. They're the ones who get targeted with the Espionage Act 
for basically countering the narrative. Um, so this is obviously an infringement on free speech. People should absolutely be able to express what they're feeling and thinking, whether it be here in the United States, it be in Ukraine or in Russia. It's categorically wrong for either of these countries to be saying to anybody, you're not allowed to side with the other side. You're not allowed to express that opinion. You can think what you want, but keep it to yourself. Don't you dare say, say it out loud. And if you do, it's a crime. So unfortunately, Gonzalo Lira is facing some serious crimes, um, and we will keep you posted on what what the result of that ends up being with his case. But I would think because of the way the law is in Ukraine, um, my guess is outlook is not very good for him, but we absolutely hope for the best. This is an infringement on speech. This is wrong. He should be absolutely allowed to say what he wants to say, and the United States should, but won't should go in there and and absolutely condemn this arrest and demand that Gonzalo Lira is let go. The United States should be demanding of that, but I'm not uh, I'm not going to hold my breath. I don't think the United States will do that. And I do know that the United States is um, looking to do very much the same, you know, with its disinformation and misinformation campaign. So what can we expect, unfortunately, at this point? But this is a this is a real tragedy. I'm excited to tell you about a new sponsor we have here for the show. GenuCell. So GenuCell is this amazing skincare line. If you go to the website, GenuCell.com slash Kim, you're going to get 10% off of your order. And I have to tell you, when I first heard about GenuCell, and this is no lie, um, I was actually a guest on another show. I'm not going to name the show because, um, well, because I don't really like the host. I'm not, so I'm not gonna... So quite, quite honestly, quite honestly. So, but I was on a, on another show and uh, the host had talked about GenuCell and, you know, did their read. They were also, they were also sponsored by GenuCell. And when we were off air, I said, are you really using this product? Because this host had, I'm not kidding you, the best skin I'd ever seen in my life. Like amazing skin. This person's not young. Um, you know, they're not old, they're not young, but just, their skin was the best skin I'd ever seen. So I asked him, do you use this product? And they said, yeah, I really do use this product. And so does my mother. And I, I mean, just, so I actually started researching the company on my own because I thought that person's skin is so great. I want to, I want to uh, look into this. So lucky now they are sponsoring the show because I really do believe in this product. I've been using it myself for the last couple of months and really does help keep the wrinkles away. I mean, it really, this, these products really are good. So I wouldn't have them on the show if they weren't. Um, but I really do like GenuCell quite a bit. Their most popular package is a really good one to get. You'll get a sampling of all of their, um, you know, it features all of their most uh, popular products, the dark spot corrector. They've got a retinol uh, cream. They've got a, a very moisturizing other creams that are there. It's just a really great product. So go to their website, genucell.com slash Kim. And there uh, you will get 10% off of that order. But again, uh, I, I do feel like my skin looks better since using it. I really do. I do feel like I don't have as many wrinkles. I One thing that's great about the retinol product also is that a lot of times retinol will make your skin really red if you use it. And this one did not do that to me. So um, and retinol is a very great thing to be using on your skin. It keep, that definitely does keep the wrinkles away. That's been known for a very long time. So check it out for yourself, genucell.com slash cam. Get 10% off your order. So excited to have them as a new sponsor for the show.